Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 57 for Wednesday, August 5th, 2015. Notifications. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's been about a year since I first checked out a few apps designed with notifications management in mind, though much has changed in a year, actually. Specifically, that episode focused on lock screen notifications, much of which was done by utilizing KitKat or previous uh, versions of Android and lock screen widget capabilities built inside. Well, what Google giveth, Google taketh away. And now in the Lollipop and Android M preview era, there is no longer any such thing as lock screen widgets. So we really don't see much, if any, customization of the lock screen happening anymore. But notifications, on the other hand, that's, that's another story entirely. I brought together three apps today that do some pretty cool things with the notifications aspect of your device. Let's take a look at today's roundup. Remember a few weeks back, I showed off Tunification. That's the app that reads the artist and title of any song that plays on your device using Android's text-to-speech engine. What if you love that idea, but you want to apply it to literally every notification that comes through? Well, again, a fan of the show developed an app that does just that called Notifications Reader. And once enabled and granted notification access, Notifications Reader will speak any new notifications to you as they appear. Now, this can get a bit noisy and kind of nonsensical depending on how many apps you have installed. But thankfully, you can go into notification rules to dial in which apps should pass notifications at what time. Yes, this can take some time if you really want to dig deep. You can tweak the rules so they're only read aloud when, say, a particular string of text appears inside the notification, or you can just kind of let them all fly on through. It's worth taking a look at which ones matter enough to get the out loud treatment. To test it out, just tap repeat last notification and you'll hear what one will sound like with the current settings. Black celebration by Depeche Mode. If you don't like the sound of it, you can actually alter the text to speech settings at a system level, as well as the pitch and speed of speech playback. There's also support for selecting a third party text to speech engine if you have one installed like Evona. Beyond that, you can determine what audio streams pass through based on the state of the device, which means you could have the app read your notifications when you're in headphones or specifically when music is playing back. And other neat features like shake to stop for killing text to speech in scenarios where you don't need a robot reading your notifications to the entire room. Also, whether the app has permission to speak in Lollipop's priority mode and whether to pause the talk back when a call is underway. Notifications Reader is $2 right now in the Play Store. I'm sad. Or rather, my stomach is sad. You see, one of my favorite lunch spots offers one to two sandwiches per day, and that's it. And the supply is limited, so you must get there early in order to get them, and you won't know what they're offering until you arrive. That is unless you follow them online. See, had I done that, I would have known that my favorite sandwich they make, the meatloaf sandwich, was on the menu two Sundays back. Instead, I ate something... Not nearly as spectacular. So unspectacular, I can't even remember what it was. All of this heartache could have been avoided if I had set up today's app with the proper information. Hooks 
Alerts for Everything allows you to set up notification alerts across a wide spectrum of triggers and sources. I'll tap the floating action button to create an alert, and I'll start off by seeing the service's most popular alerts. Things like a new episode for Game of Thrones, or a vulnerability in Android, or even a new YouTube video by my friend Marquez Brownlee. Even Powerball results if throwing money away is your cup of tea. There's obviously far too many to list, but swiping left gives access to all alerts. And here, they're broken down by category. So events like concerts or meetups. There's TV and movies for pretty much anything related to your favorite titles. Weather updates of all types, as you can see. Sports updates by league or team there's news and RSS capabilities, tech for things like reporting if a website is down or tracking a site's Alexa ranking, finance for following stock prices or currency fluctuations, as well as payment reminders, games for video game stuff, and finally, the hook category that could have saved my stomach, social. In here, I'll add Instagram by username, and enter Thistle Meets, which is their Instagram handle, and then enter what I want to happen when a new sandwich hits that feed. I'll keep receive notification and play sound as active. And then I'll hit that check mark and create the alert. And now, what do you know? Every time Thistle posts their sandwich of the day to Instagram, I'll be the first to know, and I won't ever go meatloaf sandwich list again. Thank you, Hooks. Find Hooks in the Play Store for free. What if the standard notification pane is just a bit too drab for your taste and, I don't know, light on functionality? Check this out. Snowball Smart Notifications allows you to overlay a new notification shade over the stock one, and it does a pretty good job of it. Once granted notification access, Snowball brings an alternate notification shade to your device. You can drag it down and you'll see these bubbly animations that kind of pop your notifications into place. Each notification is just a tad larger than in the stock notification shade. And part of the reason for that is Snowball is revealing notification actions by default instead of requiring an expansion of that notification to show those extra controls. Emails show a nice chunky reply button and tapping on that brings up a text field actually inside of the notification so you can save the step of jumping into the app to write a quick reply to the sender. Swiping any notification to the right removes that notification from the shade. And swiping a notification to the left reveals two more buttons. Hide will add notifications from that app to the hidden notification section. It makes it easy to add extra smarts for keeping things you don't care about out of your notification shade by default. If you tap to make a notification important, it'll take any notifications from that app and pop them up in the important section at the top of your notification shade. This is kind of prioritization. You're prioritizing the order that your notifications appear so you don't miss the most important stuff. And finally, this button takes you to a quick tools section where you'll find a number of settings, controls, and toggles for your device, as well as Snowball's settings where you can tweak the interface even further. Snowball smart notifications bring some brains to your notification shade. It makes it look a bit bubblier in the process. You can find it now for free in the Play Store. Now, Snowball is kind of interesting to me. At first, I couldn't understand how it was doing what it's doing because there really is no way in Android that I know of anyways to replace the notification shade uh, with an app. But it seems to be doing this kind of like with an overlay method uh, over what's underneath. And I guess I was kind of surprised at how well it actually worked considering it's an overlay. Um, I'd love to see more customization options so you can make it maybe a bit less bubbly and cute, but I'm sure that'll appeal to some of you. So definitely take a look for yourself. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That is Prosper. Face it, there aren't many good ways to borrow money, especially when you need it. Friends, family, credit card companies, traditional bank loans, but now with a low fixed rate loan with prosper.com, there's a better way. You can borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days and use that money for just about anything you want. You can pay off high rate credit cards. You can fix up the house, put it into your business, landscaping my backyard. Hey, if you want to get a loan and landscape my backyard, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but I could also do that too. And, uh, 
I, man, it's just something that really needs to be done at this point. So Prosper is sounding pretty good. Prosper is perfect for just that kind of thing. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest in you. You don't rake up more debt on your credit cards. You, you can pay them off with Prosper to check your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit. Just go to prosper.com slash twit. Now and for a limited time, Prosper is offering Twit viewers a $50 Visa gift card with your low interest loan. You can get up to $35,000 in your account in as few as five days and a $50 Visa gift card. Just go to prosper.com slash twit for this special offer just for Twit viewers. All right, this week's big app helps me, at least, possibly you, feel just a bit less dense when it comes to music. Let's take a look. I consider myself a pretty big music fan, but there's one thing I've always been rather inept at, and that's lyrics. From a musician standpoint, writing lyrics has always been my weakest spot. And from a listener standpoint, Picking apart and really understanding the deeper meaning of the lyrics that make up my favorite songs has been an ongoing struggle to the point where I usually just give up and accept the song for its sound and not for its deeper meaning. Once known as Rap Genius, the crowdsourced lyric database now called Genius finally got its official Android app, and I'm glad it did. Now I can finally let the hive mind do all the head scratching for me. Genius could be one of the best lyrics databases around, partially because its catalog is so incredibly thorough. Just search for any song. Let's go with Radiohead's Everything in Its Right Place, for example. Now, this song doesn't have a lot of lyrics, to be honest, and there's a lot of repetition, but they also don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. So first, Genius does what any lyric app should do. It gives you the lyrics. Okay. With that out of the way, here's what sets Genius apart. Any lyric that is highlighted that darker shade of gray is tappable. In this case, they're all darker shade of gray. Doing that takes you to expanded annotation on that particular block of lyrics, sourced by other users of the app and refined over time by the hive mind. In it, other users attempt to give meaning to the lyrical content. Sometimes it's the user's interpretation. Sometimes it's lyric deconstruction taken from the artists themselves, sourced from articles and interviews with the band. If you appreciate the user's interpretation of that chunk of lyrics, you can thumb it up, or consequently, thumb it down if you dislike it. And that's just the beginning. Genius also has expanded beyond lyrics to books and other text sources. For instance, this analysis of Barack Obama's 2012 acceptance speech. One thing the Android app doesn't have yet is the ability for users to create or edit annotations, but Genius does say that functionality is coming sometime soon. So check it out. Find Genius for free in the Play Store right now. I'm not sure if genius makes me feel like a genius, but it certainly doesn't hurt. I do love how you can find the most mundane and seemingly random lyric and find that someone in the community has done so much thought around it that they've cracked the code and think they've figured it out. I love to see how some of these interpretations kind of stack up when showed to the artists that wrote them. Uh, see how that fares. But anyways, very interesting stuff and you should take a look. All right, I'm always looking for great app ideas, uh, definitely for next next week and beyond. So send me your favorite apps and categories. All you have to do is email me at arena at twit.tv for consideration there. You can also post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. And then you're also sharing them with the rest of the world and not just me. Uh, the show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv and click on the live button. And if you can't make the live taping, don't worry about it. The show will always appear later in the evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.